Hi and welcome. In this episode, it's a part of a playlist, Halloween, and I am currently hosting this with a good friend of mine, Alex from House on Noble. So I'll have more information about that later on in the video. So for my video and crafts, I thought it would be fun to do fall. At first I was going to do Halloween, but I purchased some really cute molds from IOD and I couldn't wait to use them. So I have a few uh, projects that are made with that and um, all fall decor. So I hope that you'll enjoy the video and stay tuned to the end to see the final reveal. So let's get to the video. So I forgot to mention that this video is um, making Crocs for fall. Um, not the kind that you wear, but <laughs> um, kind for like the old fashioned utensil Crocs, that kind of thing. So I'm using this Reticket um, paint that I had left over from a project and I'm going to be mixing up some colors to make that kind of old style crockery color. So what I ended up using was a Castle Gray chalk paint along with that off-white paint as well as some of that um, terracotta. It's a pink terracotta color um, and kind of kept mixing it until I got the right color that I wanted. So then I'm just going to add a little bit of baking soda to give it that texture that I want to achieve the look of the crock. It's like a pottery color or a pottery look. So then I did get this crock for free and I forgot to mention that part and it's kind of uh, weird shaped. So I thought, you know, it's not going to hurt it to end up changing it to something different. And you can find a lot of these different things at the thrift store. And if it's something that you don't like the color, you can always change it. You can paint it to whatever color you want and you don't even have to do like the crockery look to it. So I'm just giving this a good coat and then I end up giving it two coats later on. But I don't want to fill the inside in case I want to put flowers or something inside of it. So I end up just giving it um, two coats all the way around on the outside and the bottom. I saw a crock on Instagram similar to this that had the cute little fox like this on it. And so that's why I wanted to attempt to make my own. And I'll have all of these printables that I've found on Canva. Um, on one sheet so that you can print them out how you like and you don't have to have an account to use them And I thought it would be fun to share and I forgot to mention that I used sticker paper for this So I'm just going to cut as close as I can all the way around this cute little fox And it's already looking super cute so my friend Alex introduced me to this distressing ink for paper and it's from Tim Holtz and it is amazing. You don't need a lot of it. And these brushes are so easy to use. And I'm just distressing the paper and covering up the white portion of that sticker paper and giving it the color I want all the way around it. And I, I didn't want it directly on a lot of it, but I wanted it to look, you know, like it's been there for a little bit. So I love this stuff. You'll have to try it if you want to use any kind of paper. And I've even noticed that it's even good on the chalk paint. You just have to let it dry really well before you do any kind of top coat. So then you just want to take the backing off of the sticker paper before you apply it. And also you'll want to put some Mod Podge on the back of this. I forgot to show that I did that part but you want to put that on the back and then smooth it out make sure that there's no lumps. So then I'm using my antiquing wax, which I was thinking I probably could have just used that um, ink that I had put on the paper, um, but I don't know what I was thinking, but it still works. So if you use the antiquing wax and then you just brush off where you don't want it to be so dark and kind of blend it, that makes it look perfect and it makes it look old and you know just put it a little here and there and in the crevices so see now you can see I thought oh let's just use the Tim Holtz ink <laughs> 
distressing ink. So I started carefully kind of doing it around, but then I got really comfortable with it. And this comes off of the paint as well if you get it a little wet and distress it. And um, there's some of that paint that had come off from where I rubbed too hard, but I end up fixing that at the bottom. But I wanted it to look like kind of old all the way around. And then I started getting more comfortable and rubbing a little harder. And then it just turned out so super cute. I just love how this looks. I just love it. Wait till you see all of them at the end. You'll just love them too. At least I hope you'll love them. I think they turned out super cute and I'm really proud of all of them. So now I'm just giving it a good coat of Mod Podge over the top and the bottom. So here's that information on the playlist. So you'll want to go over to House on Noble and subscribe to her channel. And if you haven't yet on mine, please do so now. Also watch the playlist down below and make sure to comment on every single video and subscribe if you uh, would love to do that as well. And show everyone some love. And also follow us on Instagram. We have our own page, hashtag fall underscore o underscore ween 2024. And go over there and like and, and comment on everyone's posts. They're sharing all of their projects there as well. And even if they don't have a YouTube channel. So I hope that you will have fun doing this and we hope to see you over on Instagram as well as here in the future. And Let's get back to the DIYs. This next DIY is so super easy. I found this at the thrift store. I think I paid a dollar for it. And I believe it's an old Pampered Chef uh, stoneware pan for cake or brownies or something like that. Uh, but I thought it would be cute to put this cute little row of pumpkins on the outer rim of it. So. This is so easy. I'm just cutting all the way around and doing the same exact thing that I did to the other one. I'm just not painting this one. And don't forget the Mod Podge before you put it on. I did on this one and had to redo it. <laughs> but make sure to put Mod Podge on and then stick it on and then do what you want to it. So here I thought this is the perfect thing again. I'm just going to use this distressing ink and just go all the way around it and it's already distressed as it is but that uh, sticker just blended right in once I got it done with it. It was so pretty. So I found this cute croc already cute from Target but it was at the thrift store for a dollar and I'm going to change this one just like the other one. So I'm using the same paint. This paint went a long ways with three of my projects, which I was grateful for. But this one did require um, a couple of coats. So I decided to use just that reticket uh, as the base and then use my other paint on top of it so that it would, um, I wouldn't use up all of that because I knew I had a few projects to do with it. So it worked out really well course dry in between coats <laughs> and again I did not paint inside of this in case I want to use it for food so it would be food safe here it is all dry and it looks super cute already just transformed from that blue and white stripes so I created this one I put a bunch of pumpkins together and I thought it would fit perfect on the front of this and again I will have the printables on these on my canva account and i'll have the link below so that you can print them out and use how you'd like so again just the same exact thing just take the backing off do the mod podge on the back stick it on and mod podge it to the front of your project and of course that distressing ink again i just love it it just makes everything look so pretty uh, you'll just definitely have to try this and get it i can possibly leave a link for it and see I'm getting a little bit more like daring with it and put shadows and stuff on there it just I loved how this one turned out it's so pretty and give it a good layer of Mod Podge but you want to be careful going over that Tim Holtz ink because as you could see it kind of came up so be very careful so we don't want to forget about that lid it's gonna make this 
just perfect with the color and everything. So I've got some antiquing wax and I'm just going to give it a coat over the top to the desired color that I want. And it's gonna be a little dark um, so that it blends in with the picture on the front of the crock. My next project is this cute little picture. It didn't have the lid that usually comes with it. And I think I paid like a dollar um, for it. And you might remember it from the 70s. No, wait, I think it's 80s or 90s. Uh, but I'm going to rough up the front of this with some uh, sandpaper because I'm going to use one of the IOD molds to put it on the front of it. And you wanna rough it up so that the air dry clay adheres to it well. And then just wipe it down really well. So I picked up this super cute mold from IOD and I am using the smaller pumpkin. Look how cute that is. You can do all kinds of things with these. And I'm just using this smaller one and it says to use cornstarch in it and just lightly do it so that the clay doesn't stick. So I'm just getting a spoon and just getting a tiny bit because you don't need much in it. And then I'm just gonna rub it all through the mold. Even into where the stem is, you wanna make sure you get it all through there. And then you wanna make sure to shake off all the excess cornstarch. I can't believe I did this, but I thought I was filming the pumpkin and I wasn't. So I'm gonna show you what I did with the pumpkin part in this leaf kind of and I just kind of, you wanna get as much of the clay you can and stick it in the um, area that you want and then um, just remove the excess with your thumb. And I'll show you a, a picture of the um, type of clay that I'm using and I love it, it works really good and it takes a little bit to dry but it's super easy to work with. So then once you have all of the clay even with the one side, then you just want to gently remove it from the, the mold and pretend like this is the pumpkin <laughs> because I ended up not using this leaf. So I'm just going to show you here. If I can get it out. There's the leaf. Sorry about that, but this is what it ended up looking like. Look how cute this is, and you have to be very gentle with that stem. So it's said to use a couple of different um, things to adhere it to whatever that you're using. And it said wood glue would work really well for this, which it did. It, it stuck to this really well, and it's, it's holding up. And so I'm just giving it a good layer of the wood glue on the back side, including the stem. And then as soon as I'm done with that, we're gonna adhere it to that cute little picture. So you just wanna be gentle with it and be careful not to squish it in the areas on the front of it that you don't want squished. <laughs> and the good thing about on the glass and with the glue, you can slide it around if you need to, which it was really easy to do. And I just kind of put, um, light pressure on it enough to adhere it without squishing it. So then if you have some areas that you kind of dinged or it's coming up a little different than what you'd like, you can just take some water and rub over it and it smooths it out really nicely. And also around the edges, if you want it to be more um, connected to your, your project, then if you get some uh, water around those edges, it will pinch it out so that it can like groove to the glass or the wood, whatever that you're working with. I apologize, but I seem to have missed um, <laughs> filming a few different things that I did here, but I'm using that same paint that I used on all of the other projects and gave this two good coats. But before that, I let that mold dry to the pitcher for about 24 hours before I started painting it. 
and it's it's holding up so well I just love it I just can't wait for you to see what it looks like at the end and also I didn't paint the inside of this one either because I want to use it for flowers so now I'm taking some antiquing wax which you can see I've started already and just going around the outer edges and into each groove of the pumpkin around the little uh, leaves in that and then even in parts of the uh, around the whole picture and on the handle and everything so that it looks distressed and look how cute it looks already so then I took it outside and I'm using my two times clear rust-oleum it's supposed to be matte spray and uh, I gave it a good coat because I wanted it to be seamless and I ended up putting a little bit of Mod Podge on the front of the pumpkin because it was too shiny when it was all dried and, and everything. So um, I would recommend to use Mod Podge on this as well. But I love how it turned out. It's so pretty. For my next project, you just want to take a big chunk of the clay out and what I'm going to do is make some cute little pumpkins. So you want to get a ball of it and kind of work it really well. You can even put some water on your hands to make it um, knead into it a little bit more so, so it will be more flexible to work with. So this is my first time using clay in anything. So I'm still learning on all of this. And so I think I did pretty good for my first time. I was really surprised how easy it was. So you want to get the size of a ball that you want your pumpkin to be. And so I needed a little extra here and I'm just gonna work that in really well and then um, roll it into a good size ball. So then because I want it to be kind of more of a flatter pumpkin, I'm kind of going to push it down a little bit. Not too much. So now I'm going to take a really long piece of twine here and you're going to want to just wrap it around the pumpkin and then kind of twist it and then turn it and twist it. So you want to see which is your bottom, which this top part now is the actual bottom. So then I'm just going to tightly squeeze it so it puts an indent into the clay if that makes sense and then wrap it around again and make that same indent kind of as far as you want it to go wrap it around again and do another indent then that one kind of slipped but it's easy to fix which is really nice about this clay so then I ended up tying a knot so that it would stay So then I tied that thinking I was finished, but there was a part that looked kind of chunky. So I grabbed some more twine and tied another piece around and did the same thing. And just made it like that and cut off the excess. So then what I want to do is press it down to kind of put an indent in the top so that that's where the uh, stem will go and then kind of work with the, the twine in there so that you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like and separate it easily with the twine and the water and just blend it however you'd like. You can even take some away if you want, if you need to, to make the shape that you want. You can squeeze it down more, pinch it out to make it look uneven. And it was just so much fun to do. It's just, the clay is so, like stress relieving to play with. It was just really nice to have this craft to do. I really enjoyed this whole process. So it was really fun. You need to try this one. So then where you've got it, where you want it, you just want to be careful to get that twine out. This is the bottom, so I'm cutting the bottom so I can smooth that out easily. And then just gently pull it out and then you're gonna wanna probably touch it up once you're done getting that out as well, but it's not much of a, of a hassle to do. It, it turned out really cute. 
So now you want to take a cinnamon stick and I got these on Amazon and I found a skinny one that will proportionally look perfect for this pumpkin and you just want to put it in at the angle that you're wanting it to look once your uh, pumpkins dry because you're gonna kind of mold it to that now and then take it out and once it dries it'll just slip right in there and then you can glue it in into place or you don't have to even glue it into place it stays in perfectly so that's what I'm doing here and then these cut pretty easily if they don't you can just um, score them and then break them with your hands and it, it works just perfect so then you'll want to take the cinnamon stick out and let it cure. Mine took about two and a half days, but if you put it on a baking uh, rack, it will dry faster. So I'm taking this terracotta paint from Folk Art and the color, I believe it's Pueblo. And I'm showing you how they're dried and it's pretty hard. And so I'm just giving this two good coats of this color. It's such a pretty color and it's already got that um, baking soda in it. So it has that sandy feel to it, the, the textured already in it. If you want more texture to it, you could definitely add some more baking soda in it, but this was just perfect. And the color turns out so pretty with this. So I did give it two good coats. And I ended up making two pumpkins, and I just showed you that I did one. Once they're dried, I ended up using this other terracotta paint in the color Adobe, and it's just perfect. And I'm using my really fine brush, and all I wanna do is just kinda highlight it, and so, I'm just dabbing some of the paint off and putting it through each of the crevices of the pumpkin and into around where the stem would go. Um, just a little bit on the flat edges just to highlight it and, and to enhance the look of it. And then I got my bigger, more flat brush that I could kind of brush over it and I got it um, just damp with some water and blended all of that white so it was more powdery looking and it just turned out really cute. So then once I was done with all of that I just grabbed my cute little cinnamon stick and stuck it in and we're done. They turned out so cute. I picked up this pot um, a few years ago at the thrift store and I used to just put some flowers in it and stuff plants and that and it's got some cracks and dings so I thought it would be perfect for this project I saw this picture on Instagram of this bowl and I was like oh my gosh I love it and this bowl would be perfect for it or planner whatever you want to call it so I grabbed some of that clay and I'm just working it um, really well so that I can maneuver it um, around the top part of the, the bowl. So then I'm just going to take it and roll it out so that it's a thin, uh, roll, long roll. <laughs> and um, one thing I didn't think about until later was to use water on my hands as I did this it would make it a, go a lot easier, but it still worked out. So now I'm just measuring around the bowl approximately how much I will need to start to work with. And then um, we'll show you in a minute here. I just want it to be even throughout the whole thing. It doesn't have to be exact, but pretty close. So then again, because it is that shiny uh, look on it, has the the top cover you want to sand it down so that when you glue it it will adhere to your project so then you want to take some water with your fingers and just rub it on around it to roll it out a little better and then um, what I did was I just used it to smooth things out before I attempted to put it onto the rim of the bowl and then you'll want to work in sections and 
take the wood glue and just put a little bit around the rim at a time. Then you want to take your rolled clay and start just pressing it to the bowl and forming it how you want it. And what I did was, um, in order to achieve the similar look, I did a kind of fluted rim like I do my pumpkin pie crust. <laughs> And I started out kind of close together, and then as I got further away from where I started, it looked better to have it kind of separated a little bit more on the fluted part. So I ended up going back and fixing those pieces, but you just kind of want to press down and mold it to the rim of it, and just make sure that it's on there really good. And then, um, you can even go back and fix it. It doesn't dry that quickly. So um, you could hurry and get it all on there and then go back and maneuver it. Um, it was my first time. I was just worried it was gonna dry too quickly because I didn't know how it was gonna work. Um, but now I know for next time that I could just put, it, put the whole thing on and then just kind of go back and and mold it the way I really would like it to look. But um, I it, I thought it was a fun project and it just looks so pretty when it's done. And so you just wanna be careful and you can, like I'm doing here, just taking extra and filling in the gaps of where it looks like it needed a little extra. So it just takes time to work with it and to mold it the way you want. So then that's what it's gonna look like is all fluted like that around the whole bowl. And I'll show you the finished one here in a minute. So remember you want to glue a small portion at a time. I just want you to remember that because the glue dries faster than the clay does. <laughs> so I'm done all the way around and um, just have to finish up a few little here and there. And even though there was some that got on the outside of the bowl, it still made it look more textured. This is what it looks like all dried and ready to go. See how it has that texture on it? I love that. That's gonna make it look even better. And for this one, I'm using this linen white chalk paint. So then I'm going to add some more baking soda to this paint and uh, quite a bit, but not too chunky. And I want it to be really chalky looking like it's pottery. So then I'm just gonna start painting the rim and the whole side here. And I give this two good coats all the way around, even inside of the bowl, because I figure I'm just gonna either put a planter inside of it or use it for fake flowers or fake greenery. So I'm gonna paint the inside of this one as well. And I just want to reiterate that I did do two full coats all the way around inside and out. So now that it's dry, I'm going to use the obsidian color in that terracotta paint with a really hard dry brush here. It's so that it doesn't get really wet on your project. And I probably could have used just a um, stencil brush which I think I end up using later. But I just want little streaks here and there and on the uh, rim of it where the fluted area is. And thinking back, I probably could have just used my antiquing wax and just rubbed it here and there and that probably would have looked cute. And I can probably still do that and add to the dimension of everything. You'll wanna get your rag a little damp to rub onto the paint um, so that it comes off a little easier and doesn't look so stark. 
So then what I did was gave it a really good coat of Mod Podge all the way around outside the bottom and the inside of the bowl. And then I was done. And look how good it looks. I'm so proud of this piece. I am in love with it. I hope you like it. I am so excited to show you how they finally turned out. I love each and every one of them and I am so proud of how they turned out. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you loved my projects and give them a try because they really weren't that hard. I thought it would be but it wasn't. It was a lot of fun. And don't forget that playlist. You want to go and watch each and every video because this is my hosted playlist along with my friend Alex, so you don't wanna miss this one. And give everybody a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and then head over to Instagram to that hashtag fall underscore o underscore ween 2024. And like and comment on everyone's posts so that they know that you were at my video. So once again, I hope that you enjoyed my video. If you've made it this far and you're new here, please consider to subscribe, share my video, comment and like it. And I hope to see you again. I had a lot of fun with this one, so I don't want it to end. <laughs> Thank you so much and have a great day.